Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about dividing complex numbers. So this is on page 31 of your 1A packet. I am looking just at the first page of A6, and you are going to be able to divide two complex numbers today. Dividing comes last because it's going to incorporate multiplication, addition, subtraction, combining like terms, and simplifying all into one. So this is a very like meaty, meaty topic, and you're going to be able to have to use all of the skills you learned in A A5 in order to be successful in division. So this is something that's really important to focus on and be really particular about how you're doing it. So looking up at the top, when dividing complex numbers, the goal is to write the quotient of two complex numbers in standard form A plus BI. You cannot have an imaginary number in the denominator. I'm going to repeat that. You cannot have an imaginary number in the denominator. This is the key. Think back to in geometry. Um, you should have done something like 1 over square root of 2. And you were told you can't have the square root of 2 in the denominator of a fraction. So what you had to do is it was called rationalizing the denominator. So in geometry, you had to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And you got the square root of 2 over 2. If this doesn't ring a bell with you, that's okay. This was something that was done in geometry. If it doesn't ring a bell with you, it's totally fine. Um, if it does, it can help you to understand what we're doing today. So in this, notice I've gotten rid of the radical in the bottom, and now I just have a number on the bottom. That's what I'm trying to do today. So when we did multiplication, remember some of the last examples that we did? We were able to get rid of the imaginary number by multiplying by what's called a conjugate. Complex conjugates are pairs of number in the form of a plus bi and a minus bi so that your product is just a squared plus b squared. Now, that might seem really complex. What I want you to focus on is the fact that the difference between these is that one has a positive imaginary number and one has a negative imaginary number. The only thing that's changing is the sign in front of the imaginary number. So technically, in this first example, so again, I'm only looking to get rid of the imaginary number in the bottom, in the denominator. So I don't really care what's going on in the top. I just care what's going on in the bottom. Currently, I have positive 3i in the bottom. If you think of that in terms of a plus bi, this is 0 plus 3i. So my conjugate would be 0 minus 3i or just negative 3i. When you multiply on the bottom, you also have to multiply on the top. That's called creating an equivalent fraction, an elementary school skill. So in the bottom, negative 3i times 3i gives me negative 9i squared. In the top, I have negative 3i times 9 plus 12i. So I'm going to distribute that in. Negative 3i times 9 gives me negative 27i. Negative 3i times 12i gives me negative 36i squared. Now notice here I have two i squareds. One is here and one is here. So when I'm simplifying, I need to fix this. So this turns this into negative 27i doesn't change, but negative 36 times negative 1 turns this into plus 36. And then negative 9 times negative 1 turns that bottom into positive 9. So now keep in mind, my goal is to get this to look like a plus bi. Currently, I have something that looks like bi plus c over bi plus a over c. I have something down there. So I want to simplify this by splitting it up. 
So I'm going to have negative 27i over 9 plus 36 over 9. Negative 27 over 9 is negative 3, and 36 over 9 is 4. And if I want to put this in standard form, I've got 4 minus 3i. Notice I no longer have a denominator. Not even no denominator with an i, just no denominator. So there's my final answer. I'm going to do the next problem. Not two, but three. So I've got five minus two i over three plus four i. Now again, I don't care what's on the on the top. I care what's on the bottom. On the bottom, you see three plus four i. And your immediate thought has to be, what is the complex conjugate of that? I change the sign in front of the i. So now I've got three minus four i. What I do to the bottom, I also do to the top. Okay, so now I have to go through and multiply this out. So 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times negative 4i is negative 20i. Negative 2i times 3 is negative 6i. Negative 2i times negative 4i is plus 8i squared. Now looking at the bottom, I have 9 minus 12i plus 12i minus 16i squared. So I'm going to switch my i squareds and I'm going to combine like terms. So I see i squareds here and here. So the top turns into 15 minus 26i minus 8. The bottom turns into these go away. So I've just got nine plus 16. So let's combine like terms again and put it in the correct order. 15 minus eight is seven minus 26i over nine plus 16 is 25. Now this is different from the last one because they're not divisible, but I can still split it up and write my final answer as fractions. So this would be 7 over 25 So this would be 7 over 25 minus 26 over 25 and the i gets tacked on in the end. So this shows you a plus bi, so the a value is 7 over 25 and the b value is 26 over 25, or negative 26 over 25. So those are two examples of division. Notice there's a lot of multiplication, a lot of simplifying, and you really have to catch those i squareds, and you really have to make sure you know what you're going to multiply by. So your first step is to look at the bottom, think about what you need to multiply by to get rid of the imaginary number on the bottom, and go from there.